up oh my god we started on time who'd have thunk about all that stuff it's almost like we're trying to learn how to be punctual here punctual not punctual <laughs> how you guys doing out there i am solar gray the cinematic sorcerer and of course i am here today with hey it's license inch everybody how you doing hey that's right so we are here we are here but soon you actually the rest of you will also be here and welcome to bust a recap the show where two middle-aged men talk about the stuff that they're watching on tv and y'all are listening because you like our company uh how you doing man pretty good pretty good pretty good um, yeah just pretty good no, i'm pretty good actually i'm uh a little jazzed. I uh, I wound up signing up for a vendor booth at the seventh annual Spook Show at the Halloween Club nice. on April sixth. Can we get you to uh, speak up just a little bit there? <clears throat> and uh, so uh, I, I I am now officially uh, obligated to like show up and sell finish things. some stuff. Finish some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's part of the reason why I did this. Is this is this is kind of my crafting equivalent of a gallery show in mm-hmm. that I have to get my stuff together, I have to package it up, I have to give it names and send it off, and you know what happens happens. Yeah, no, that's that's a serious thing. Yeah. It's um, I often take a look at the friendship between Stickman, yourself, and me, and quite often I actually start to go, you know what? Why am I here? What do I bring to the party? Because, like, you're the tinkerer. He's the good writer. What am I? And I, and then it hit me. I'm the one that makes them finish stuff. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, like, getting up because I remember right before Stickman was going back to school, he was talking about, like, oh, well, you know, he might he might one day like try and finish one of the films because we're talking about like pumpkin killer and murder corn and all that stuff but i don't know it's a thing and, I, and i'm like dude just finish it dude, you know what you should go back to school because mm-hmm. if you're paying for it and there's a teacher saying if you don't finish it you fail the class and you don't get your money back that'll light a candle under your butt okay. and i'm sitting up going you know what man you <coughs> should sign up Ooh, hang on hang mm-hmm. on we are having a little bit of a thing. Yeah, just a little bit of a thing here. Where is my mouse? Oh, hi, mouse. There you are. Yeah, we're having a little bit of a thing here. Uh-huh. Hmm, that's a little weird. We're losing transmission here. Huh. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, I mean, our sound is doing good. So, so is that an internet connectivity thing? or? A- I don't think so. I think it's a, I think it's a program thing. Do we need to? Do we need to take a moment and uh, uh, refresh? Uh, we. Oh no no no. We good. We good. We good. Okay. We good. It'll, we'll be coming back in just a second here because the way that that works is it all comes out in the editing. I will say that. So yeah, cool. Yeah, my thing is back. I'm going at three k three kb per second. That kind of thing. So yeah, so I'm just I'm literally like sitting up here and I'm like, oh, well, well I how, guess I'm, how many times have you given him the deathbed, the bed that eats people lecture? Well, dude, seriously, <laughs> it's how how can I put this? Like, he really, really, he amongst a lot of other people, they got to hear that kind of stuff. You know, they mm-hmm. really got to hear. Look, it's a bed, it eats people, and it got made. All right, somebody put pen to paper hammers to wood and they finished it craft services showed up laid out muffins yes. coffee was brewed yes and actors hey actors take whatever work we can get our hands on i will say that we're like hey uh you got a gig yeah all right cool i'll take it i, I yeah but i don't i don't know what kind of gig we're sitting up on oh no really it's mm-hmm. it's, it's a real thing so yeah doing a thing real quick yeah, Saturday uh, afternoon he came uh, over and made me watch a, uh, a video, uh, a movie, I forget what it was, it was like Blood Rider, I think was what it was called. Blood Rider? Blood Rider. Okay. And 
if you weren't a gamer, you would not have appreciated the movie nearly as much as I did. <laughs> because the movie starts out with two high school kids stealing a car. Okay. And it just keeps escalating. And it just goes into strange it just, places. It just keeps going. And there was a couple funny running gags. Didn't have great production values, but it was entertaining. And the whole time I'm like, yeah, they're gamers. Yeah. Yeah, I've run this scene. <laughs> oh my God. You just flipped out one crazy and totally murdered that guy for no reason. You have a problem. Shut up. <laughs> and then they go on like and I'm just like fine fine you all make your failed mora- you all make your immorality checks you feel really bad moving on right <laughs> you know because <laughs> if you weren't familiar with gamers you'd be like well, people don't act like that I'm like they do when they're running a tabletop yeah and truth they tend to act like that when people ain't watching you know the internet wasn't the first place that people decided that they were monsters <laughs> and when it culminated with the second second group of cultists attempting to resurrect Hitler. That's when I looked over at Stickman and said, wow, this is literally like some of the Cthulhu live scripts I've read. Like, <laughs> down to the fact that it was some set up in someone's living room. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. So. But uh, I enjoyed it. I wouldn't call it a good film, but it was kind of a fun film, especially if you've ever sat down and played like a Cthulhu tabletop with your friends. <laughs> That is very awesome. That is very awesome. So, yeah, um, this weekend, man, this is now full disclosure. I am tired. I am Mm -hmm. really tired. I just got reminded by my body that um, I am no longer in my 20s. Mm, mm, It's a it's a fascinating thing. We call I call that uh, 6 (laughs) a.m. Yeah, well, (laughs) you're a little bit older than me. Just just not much, but a little bit. But um, yeah, it actually turns out like um, I ended up getting what tendonitis like 11, 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. And you know when you have like a lingering thing and it goes away, but it's not gone. It's just going. I'm waiting for you to get comfortable, bro. You're going to forget that I'm here. And then one day, one day, you're going to look up and you won't have access to a body part that you've gotten used to. Mm. (laughs) Yeah. Not to mention the fact that we've actually been having weather in Southern California. So normally we don't have weather. So as you get older, you don't notice that you don't have the, oh, must be raining. My knee's hurting. Yeah. You know, kind of thing going on. And then suddenly we're getting, it's like, ow, you know, why am I getting more aches and pains? And it's storming. (laughs) And you're like, I thought that was just, you know, colorful BS for storytelling purposes. Right? (laughs) Right? Like, seriously. Oh, I'm going to lose the chat here for a minute. What? You guys thought I forgot about you? Just trying to make sure that my my stuff is out. Oh, 360p. What is all this? Automatic quality. Blah. So, yeah. Yeah, this is, um, yeah, that's better. But yeah, so um, so the way it hit me this weekend was um, I went to the Long Beach Comic Expo. I was there all of Saturday and half of Sunday because I had to come back on Sunday morning, and I had to um, you know, run my show that I do every mm-hmm. Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. So I was here with um, I was here <clears throat> with the Dugger Knot and all that jazz, and um, man, I will tell you when I went to sleep last night. It felt like my shoulder was out of socket. My tendonitis is popping up. I can barely hold my girlfriend because it hurts to hold my arm in any position other than this. Yep. Like literally, like this, right here. This is this is how I got to sleep. I'm like, oh my god, I need to get a sling now. I, I have to sleep in a sling, and all that stuff. So, you know, uh, needless to say, I didn't sleep well. I did not sleep well last night. So I am tired. <laughs> Mm. I literally am. I'm like, all right. He said he said he's going to be on his way down here. That's going to be good. All right, cool. He's on his way down here. He said he's leaving work around quarter till. Not a problem. Not a problem. I just, I don't have time for a nap. I got to prep the show. Uh, <laughs> but a nap looks good. Especially since my office chair is so soft. And you guys don't see the rest of the studio because magic is and it's terrifying um but i have another chair in here for guests and it's really big and really padded and really really good to make sure my guests are nice and relaxed and answer um answer candidly and don't notice me taking their purses and rummaging through them for loose change (laughs) and um or the fact that it hides a vial of uh ambrosia 
<laughs> Sorry, I've been watching. I finally, finally got caught uh, caught up on the new season of Swery Potter. Oh, okay. All um, right. Yeah, yeah. Makes me scared to death of libraries. And if you guys want want us to talk about that, you're gonna have to leave us a Twitter. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So seriously, that is that is, dude. I'm not gonna lie. It it, it was hard. I'm mm-hmm. sitting up and I'm going. Wait, I'm an old man now. Yep. And. and uh, 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 what? One of the one of the older gentlemen that I know, we were we were commiserating about aches and pains, and he he said that when you get older, you think it's you think it's going to be this gradual slide, like <laughs> you're just going to slowly over time gradually develop these things. He goes, it doesn't work that way. You have aging spurts. Yeah, you're completely fine one day, and then your knee goes bad, and you're try- and you kind of end up yeah. going, huh. That's weird and unusual. And, and then the fifteenth day in a row, you're like, maybe I should get checked out. And the yeah. doctor's like, lose ten pounds and here's some drugs. Get out of my office. Yep. And about the time <laughs> you finally get used to the fact that your knee is bad and adjust your life accordingly, your elbow goes out. <laughs> so it's just like one little failure after the other. So, but they always catch you off guard and they always catch you by surprise. See, I was prepped for this. Advice for advice for you young whippersnappers out there. That's right, but I was wise when I was young. I read Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, which don't have a whole lot of Zen. It just lets you know uh, eventually your bike is going to break, and it's just going to keep doing it. So get used, to, get used to fixing it or sell the damn thing. That's pretty much the whole book in a book report form. But <laughs> speaking of books in book reports form... Let's talk to our friends who are not known for reading, and that is our good friends over at MP City. What's going on, Deck Mob? How you guys doing? Hey, MP City. That's right. Um, let's see. We've got Dame Red Bento um, giving our seasons. You know, spring, summer, ninth level of hell, fire, earthquake. You know, we got <laughs> um, we got more than four seasons here in beautiful Southern California. Yeah. Um, props to Miss um, you know Miss Bento out there for the great interview, which will be going up. Um, yeah, we were talking about um, talking about me going to the expo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, How'd that go? Um, truth. It went pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll talk about it later on, but needless to say, I got oh, 16 interviews over the course of the weekend. Oh, nice. Yeah. That, really, really nice. At the same time, I'm sorry, because you have hours of editing ahead of you. You're learning so well. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so proud of this guy. This guy. Yeah. This guy is like, yeah, because so many people got used to me going to conventions, and I'm like, no, I got like five or six interviews and all that stuff, and they're going, what? Blah, blah, blah. That should be easy. I'm like, all right, you do it. Yeah. And a couple of them started, and they're like, okay, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> this really sucks. I'm like, yeah, you're going to appreciate the next movie you watch, huh? Mm-hmm. Every time that camera moves, every time, every time it does this, me, him, me, him, me, him him there is somebody there that's going dear god don't do that please don't do now i have to color correct and then i have to render and then i got dead to bird to bird to bird to bird and even, yeah you, you're doing it solo but you also have done it professionally professional for other people so i know you're also aware of when you've been doing that for four hours you've got it tweaked right where you want it and someone leans over your shoulder and goes could you rework that and you're like yeah sure actually my answer is i totally can not gonna but i can <laughs> you know that it, that's the best part about <clears throat> being a producer because like mm. other producers go in and saying you know it would be really good if we could like get a crane shot over the audience and you can just look at them going yeah yeah it would anyway all right give me camera five <laughs> camera six mm-hmm. and is there any way we can do it do you remember seeing a crane in the auditorium when you were just out there well no so no crane but you want me to do a crane shot is, is that it well well, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, no, I, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. You know, maybe, maybe we can get like 3D shots, you know, three. I mean, there's no 3D camera out there and aliens. Yeah, aliens would be good. It'd be totally cool if like aliens came by, ripped the roof off of this place, started transporting people. So, no, I don't have those tools. You know, that's I, I don't know what you just pitched. Sounds like the greatest, greatest version of King Lear ever. Well, it's kind of hard to do King Lear wrong. It is just English words put in the proper order but um but yeah, the only yeah. problem is they're set by actors hey hey <laughs> hey without actors tv just be 
a really noisy box or a blue flat thing on your wall. That's it. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. We've done some market testing. Blue didn't test very well. Oh, yeah. Enough! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's exactly it. So, ah, so uh, where but, were we? Um, we were thanking the people for showing up. Um, we said hey to NP City. And, um, you know, so we are at that part of the show, one of my favorite parts of the show, where I invite you guys to come into the show. That's right, you. You're right there. I know. I know we got people looking at us. I know. I'm watching you. I'm watching you watching me, watching you watching me. So if you want to join in our revelry, here we go. I love It's because I haven't hired a sound guy, and I'd love to hire a sound guy, but we would need you guys to go over to our Patreon and, um, you know, help us keep the lights on, help us hire things and stuff like that, um, because that stuff costs money, but for as low as a dollar a month, you get access to every show that we put up, and we tend to, like, be on, be pretty much on top of it, try and get our patrons, um, up and going. We've got five patrons right now. And these guys are awesome. I would say their names, but they've asked me to stay anonymous because they don't want that kind of fame. But if you want your names in the credits and all that stuff, join up with one of our tiers. We've got tiers from $1 to $100 all the way. And if you want to help us out in an immediate manner, because you guys know I broke a camera this weekend, then head on over to our GoFundMe and just send us some kind of donation there. But really... As much as I love it when people throw money at us and all that jazz, I, um, I'm i just thanking you guys for showing up and spending time with us and all that stuff. So it does mean a lot that you're here, you know, especially for those of you guys that subscribed to our channel on Twitch with your Amazon Prime account. That is awesome. And if y'all don't have any direct money to throw at us like that, that's perfectly cool. But if you haven't used your Amazon Prime subscription, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? We over here back on the deck, we would really appreciate that too. Just anything to help us keep the lights on. And keep me from having to work these jobs where I'm shoveling things for people whose languages I don't understand. 
<laughs> and if you guys don't like anything I just said, that's fine. Send us an email over at backinthedeck at gmail.com. Send all of your complaints. CC um, Solar, the cinematic source work. And with that, we are back. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, you seem a little bit amused today. Well, so a couple of things you say were cracking me up. I especially <laughs> like the, he's little boy, face it, he's, he's, he's Hufflepuff. Yeah, I'm Hufflepuff, but just because I'm a Hufflepuff, yeah, I'm Hufflepuff, but I'm a Death Eater too. Well. Why did we let the Hufflepuff into the Death Eater Club? Somebody has to bring the snacks. Oh, snacks! I'll go get them! <laughs> hey, you know what? <laughs> All right. I don't really talk about Harry Potter a lot because I'm a living, breathing Ravenclaw, which means we're crazy people and we're all about coulda, not shoulda. But Hufflepuff is my favorite house, thank you, because their motto, do good because. They're the actual good people. They're like, you know, Gryffindor is all about the glory. They're like, look at me, I'm saving the day. And Hufflepuff is like, oh, yeah, you're finally here. Huh? Yeah. They're like Great Britain in World War One, And Gryffindor is like America saying, Boogie, coming again. And, and Hufflepuff is like, oh, we thought you guys never arrive. Yeah, we, we've been fighting, we and the Russians have been fighting these German guys forever, you know, and... So you know, what you're saying, just because we managed to get all of the over-enthusiastic jocks and uh, jocks in one house and all of the uh, weepy emo kids in a different house and all of the guys who are just way too into their textbooks in the third house, well, meanwhile, we get to hang out right next door to the kitchen and get left alone? No, we didn't do that on purpose. Well, you know, it's a funny thing. It's a funny thing because um, there's been talk about the casting for the new Batman movie. And they're like, who are they talking about? And there's, and I'm telling you, it's Harry Potter's day, because huh? um, yeah, it's. I was, gonna, it, I was just gonna say, like, how that that's a weird segue. So I know, I know. You have it, to tie that together. I me. am, I am, but yeah. Um, according to some word around the campfire, um, since Marvel has gotten, um, since Marvel has gotten their rights to, um, to, um the X-Men and all that stuff back, uh -huh. you know, they have to recast some of the stuff, okay? Okay. So, a lot of rumors on the internet, <laughs> if you just do a quick Google search, has been saying that, one, people are talking about Daniel Radcliffe for Wolverine. Harry Potter okay. as Wolverine. My, my very first thought was, what? And then I thought about him, I just thought about him in that photo, if you go back, mm -hmm. the very first photo there, with him with a beard. Oh, yeah. Ratty Rad with a beard? I, yeah, Rat Rat. Because you're like, what? That's crazy. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And then, because he, you're thinking of, I'm thinking, picture him. You say Harry Potter, mm -hmm. I picture him like 14 years old mm -hmm. in, in the wizarding robes with the scar on his forehead. But Jim, you see Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, dude, yeah. The with the beard. And Daniel like, Radcliffe grew up at the same time Emma Watson did. Yeah. So I'm just going to put that out there. But yeah, here we go. So, Daniel but then Radcliffe. you see that and you're like, I actually could kind of see him pulling off an, like a like a young Logan. Now, granted, Logan Logan isn't supposed to yeah, age. He's never born, been young. But, yeah. but you know the actor is age. Yeah. So, uh, but and I could actually see that, and he's already I'm, been in one like multi-decade franchise. Mm -hmm. So they're like, hey, this kid knows how to like make seven movies in a row. We, right. can, we can lock him in, and you know, he's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Uh, I actually saw him in, uh, what was the name of that movie? The one where he plays a dead body? Yeah, <laughs> the weirdest zombie movie I ever saw, uh, uh, Swiss Army Man. Okay, yeah. Which, uh, that is an odd movie, I really wish, I, I, I saw it on streaming, I'd really like to watch it again with director's commentary, because there was obviously some, like, psychological stuff going on, mm -hmm. I'm not sure where the line between crazy and real actually was. Right. And... I know the director probably did that on purpose, but I would like a little clarification on the last four minutes of the film to figure out how much is the crazy and how much is the real, because I don't know how to gauge it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I have a feeling you just look back at you and go, well, what speaks to you? I'm like, I hate it when you do that. Yeah. And uh, the actor um, the actor who played um, Cedric Diggory, uh -huh. well, okay, Edward <laughs> from Twilight. Mm -hmm. You know, Edward, you know, sparkly vampire. Um, he's actually rumored to be um, on the short list for Batman. Uh, 
I don't know because I've only seen the character, I've only seen the actor as that character. No, so you have not. I haven't. Because Cedric Diggory is the same dude. So Cedric Diggory was the Bruce Wayne of House Hufflepuff. Think back to the Goblet of Fire. He was like the smartest and the most athletic, and the he had the best grades, the best athlete. He yeah. was the one that like sacrificed his life for Harry Potter to win the Goblet of Fire. Same actor, yeah, because actors play other roles. I just never tied them together. I guess pre presumably because he, he just has a very different look with the sparkly makeup. On well, yeah, because you know, in in Harry Potter, he looked like a cool dude, and then there was Twilight. <laughs> and, uh, all I all I know from Twilight. You know, Twilight's a very confusing franchise because all, whenever you, you try to figure out what a character looks like, it's just, all it is is just how awesome their abs are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously, read the book. You'll understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, but I'm talking, of course, for those of you guys out there that don't really like, um, what is the term? Um, interesting thing, and I realized how black I actually am because a lot of black people, especially when I um, where I was growing up, we don't know actors' names, but we know their characters. Mm -hmm. So we'll be like, oh, hey, Cedric Diggory. Hey, what's going on? Um, Goose, Mother Goose. Yeah, Mother Goose. No, uh, you, yeah, Nelson, Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah. Cannot say Anthony Edwards. Cannot say it. Don't know who that is. Um, I had an experience like that when I was young working as an, at an usher at a playhouse, and Meredith Baxter Burney was in my group to put to her seat. And I didn't know about like her feminist stuff and her Broadway stuff. I'm just like, you're the mom from Family Ties, you know? And she's like, mm, yeah. So, but yeah, I'm talking about the actor Robert Patterson. Okay, that is, that's Cedric Diggory, that's Edward. This guy is quite possibly the next, uh, the next Batman. The thing is, I, I know this is weird because mm -hmm. I'm very schizophrenic about, about actors who play Batman. Because I look at that and I go, he could do Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. But I don't look at him and think, he could do Batman. Well, but uh, the silly thing about that is Batman is just a chin and and a voice. Yeah, and the dude has a chin. Yeah. And he's a British like, actor, so whoa, I know. Put that photo back. Ah. I'm going to put my thumb over it and hide his face. Oh, my God, it's Batman. <laughs> I'm Batman. Oh, man. So, yeah. So, yeah. these are just rumors, though. Nothing's been confirmed. Nothing. So, I'm not going to be that guy on the internet saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Hey, um, hey, you know, but, you so. know, hey, talk, hey, hey, NP City, tell us what your what your ideal fantasy. Yeah, fantasy what for is Batman what be. is NP City you, saying about who that? You want to see play Wolverine? Well, let's see here. That's uh, we got them talking about like Team ABS. I guess I don't know what that is. Vixen is talking about some musical stuff, and yep, 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 yep. So, <laughs> oh no, you were right the first time, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. So I don't know. I personally. I gave up on that. Oh, my fantasy casting for this superhero thing. I literally, literally gave up at Dark Knight. I, I did. Because um, I was on the dudes from Knight's Tale. Yeah. That guy from 10 Things I Hate About You. Pfft, please. Uh, no, that ain't the joke. No, no. Mark Hamill is the Joker. <laughs> you know. And well, boy, okay. was I wrong. Well, yeah, for me, <laughs> the reason why I don't get like majorly incensed anymore is... The original Batman, when they were when Timber. You mean like George Reeves? No, like uh, the, the the original the uh, our Batman movie. When, oh. When they have Mr. Mom, because <laughs> that's what I thought of. Michael, it, Michael Keaton is Mr. Mom cast as Batman. And I remember thinking, what? That is the stupidest, most insane thing I have ever heard. What the hell are they thinking? And then I saw an interview, and Tim Burton went, "This isn't Batman the superhero." This is Batman, the the psychopath, the man <laughs> who dresses up in a costume and goes out at night and beats people up. And I went, oh, you know when you put it like that, that's like Michael Keaton could rock that. Well, it's actually funny because I saw, um, like, when, when Michael Keaton was announced in 88, I'm like, Michael Keaton, <laughs> you went Mr. Mom. I should have gone Mr. Mom. Sorry, Godfather. You know who you are. Um, no, I went Night Shift. Um, yeah, because you yeah, yeah like, like uh, in some of those other films, you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, because I'm like, yeah, Doc, go, a like, Batman? Not, I can actually see, well, I've already seen him run a brothel with the Fonz. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. So when you, when you looked at what it was, but when it was coached in that framework, I was like, okay, he knows what he's doing, and he did pick a good actor. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean that. That's and, one of the you things. Know, it's so. just the, the only problem with that movie is they just needed to tell the special effects guy that I, I need to be able to turn my head. <laughs> it, okay, that is a thing. <laughs> that that is a thing. The only time, yeah, but that was it. Um, I got my wish for my superhero casting, and I'm good. I'm yeah. good for the rest of my life because I wasn't on the I wasn't on the on the. Um, Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. Mm -hmm. Since I'm a metalhead, I'm like, Glenn Danzig, he's already built like a tiny little bulldog, but didn't know if he could act, you know. Um, but no, um, I got Patrick Stewart as Professor X. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. I'm really good. But again, Patrick Stewart is another place where I was wrong, you know, because as soon as I'm an American, Okay, now I'm a black American. And black Americans, like most other Americans, didn't know, couldn't pull Patrick Stewart out of a police lineup until Star Trek The Next Generation. Yeah. And most of us were going, who's this old dude? That ain't Kirk. What the, that other guy looks like Kirk. Why ain't he the captain? Five years later, we find out why. <laughs> we, we find out and it's like, no, 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 no. He cool. He cool. No, he cool. So him being Professor X, yeah, that, that that's fine. That was what I thought. That was what I wished. That was what I got. I wanted Angela Bassett for Storm, but you can't always get what you want. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, and honestly, I didn't even know I wanted Fassbender for Magneto. I didn't know I wanted him as Magneto until I got him. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I trust him. I trust him. I was fine with Batfleck. Um, I was mad at Henry Cavill as Superman because I've never seen anyone that looked more perfect, even down to the hairy chest. And never before did I understand Lex Luthor as much as I did until I saw Henry Cavill as Superman. Yeah. Yeah. Because I looked at Henry Cavill and I said, it's not fair. I'm never going to be that. We must destroy him. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you feel about, the, feel about him playing the character in the movie? He was in a movie? Yeah. Sorry, I was trying to make a joke that you were just talking about the actor, completely unrelated to him being cast as Superman. I followed up with okay, the, he yeah. was in a movie? Yeah, I was there, explaining there, there. to people at home because I felt my delivery was stilted, <laughs> stilted and obscure. Yeah, but yeah, like Something seriously. Something we need to work on improv cast, class, uh, improv cast people, as well as diction, apparently. Yes, what? and we need to get along with the rest of the show. So, oh, come on, that was funny. Um... <laughs> But yeah, but we're here to talk about two shows that we didn't even think about the casting of until we started watching it. And that is Cloak and Dagger and Daredevil. So Cloak and Dagger season one. Um, you're on episode nine. On this episode is the nine. penultimate episode. Backbreak. Almost the finale. <laughs> Ninth episode, Backbreaker. And that is an apt title because they're going to break the viewers back. How so? All right, let's see if I can... Uh, do a quick synopsis and then we'll do a follow-up. All right. So, Tandy. Well, first, we take a pause from the narrative to cut away to uh, Avita in, cl in class at the prep school being taught by the priest about the hero's journey. And he explains the course of the hero's journey, the key elements, how he meets the mentor, how he defeats the gatekeepers, how uh, at and how he becomes stronger, and then we have regression, where he fails, usually either because of some some trauma, like losing a loved one, cut <laughs> away to the guy in the fridge, or their own basic frailties. Cut away to Tandy burning her father's face out of all of her family photos. <laughs> yeah. Now this is important, ladies and gentlemen, because this is the this is the director's way of taking a moment to pause and say, "I know you're hurt, but I know you're losing your shit, but hang in there, stay with us. We have a plan. This is going somewhere. We know what we're doing." Mm-hmm. And then it gets worse. <laughs> Everybody, because remember the previous every episode, everyone got what they wanted, and then it all went down. It all went to crap. And nothing was good. And then this is fallout from that. And by fallout, I mean it just keeps going down. So Tandy, uh, apparently betraying, betraying her father's trust is not enough. 
Now she's decided to, oh, I don't know, step one, return to return to drugs. Step two, return to her lifestyle of drugging rich dudes and mm-hmm. stealing from them. Only instead of stealing their stuff, because she's got so much money, she don't need it no more, she steals their hopes. <laughs> so she goes into their minds. Wait, are you saying that she becomes evil? <laughs> yeah, she becomes evil. She becomes, she becomes actually evil. She steals their hopes, giving them clinical depression, because, she, to quote, <laughs> she's a cruel bitch who likes to beat up other people because she's uh, not feeling well, just like her mom. <laughs> and in a weird way, she's just like her dad. I just had that epiphany. Do tell. Well, There's, finish the synopsis first. Okay, yeah. oh, sorry. Sorry, I had an epiphany. Mm. So, um, we cut to Ty. Ty's with his mom and dad. They are at the police station. Uh, one of the police officers is informing them that apparently a police officer has confessed to murdering their son. And that he is currently on suspension. Uh, suspension for committing admitting to murder that's right and uh, that they will be looking into it well paid suspension pending further investigation oh, they, we, uh, vacation not that I watch the show I, it's just you know yeah. news <laughs> and um, the parents are like uh huh uh huh so what are you going to do about it and they're like oh well we're looking into that well we were told that before meanwhile Ty's like uh, <laughs> uh why isn't anyone here being a little more, I don't know, enthusiastic? Like, the thing I've been telling you for the last three years that you're going, well, there's no proof and you're lying, has just been vindicated. Can someone look at me and go, you were right? And they're like, nah, we're going home now. Well, let's take a look at that scene real quick. Because, um, yeah, this is a real important thing because in this scene, um, there's very much a generational rift. Because you got the yeah. young guy going, look, I proved it. And the parents kind of going, you're acting like we didn't believe you when you were a kid. Yeah. But what you gonna do? Let's take a look. I was right. All these years I was right. Billy was exactly who I said he was. My brother was a hero. I don't want you to tell me who Billy was. Don't you just, dare. Mom, let's get in the car. I'm sure you got some schoolwork. To schoolwork? Do. Who the hell cares about schoolwork? Watch your mouth. Get in the car. We will talk about this later. So this is where everyone... <laughs> And the yep. film starts to have their reversals. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ty, who has spent his whole life trying to do the good thing, starts to fall apart because he did the good thing, and it, he did the good thing. He won, and it all turned to ashes. And he starts in his mouth. Yes, in his mouth. <laughs> and he starts to lose it. And every single time he's like about to flip out, he pulls out his cloak and he looks at it and he thinks. And you know, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Meanwhile, Latte Cop uh, finds the murder weapon while she's watching them cart, uh, cart her, her lover's body away. And then, you know, they take, they lit, and she's looking at it for, for, it for she's a key evidence. She's about to figure out exactly who did this. And they snatch the weapon literally out of her hand and say, get her out of here. And <laughs> kick her out of, the, out of the room. And I'm like, well, that's not symbolic. So we flash forward. Later on, she's in the uh, cop bar uh, drinking an entire bottle because, you know, as they're having a bit of a wait for their downed uh, friend. And at some point, uh, uh, narcotics cop walks in and starts, like, bragging. Now, the dude who literally is responsible for the murder, and everyone knows it, (laughs) is standing there bragging and everything. She loses it, grabs the truncheon from behind the bar, and cold and cold cocks him right in the back of the head. Now, this is very interesting because right when they're doing this, the juxtaposition from the class lecture is: this is the moment during the reversal where the hero can either rise to the challenge and become stronger than before, or fail and become the villain. And then <laughs> cue coconut sound. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, who's going to be the villain? Because they just said the word villain, and then they pointed out who the villain is, or is Latte Cop going to become the villain? Huh. All right. I don't quite know where they're going there with that, but that that bears watching. That's a good question. But, you know, when it comes to, um, yeah, when it comes to, um. Yes, hosting a drink for the guy he murdered, chopped up, and shoved in a fridge. Yep. Oh, oh, yeah. God, that hurt. That, oh, God. And this is this is the part. This is the part what that that set me kind of in a cold rage. The the rest of the room pulls her off of him, and then proceeds to watch 
as he taunts her, beats her, kicks her, mm -hmm. and complete and, and the entire precinct is just, just standing there watching it, knowing exactly what he did, what's going on, and being complacent and supporting it. And I'm like, oh no 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 no, like like no, like. Welcome to systemic corruption. Yeah, but they made a they made a mistake. <laughs> They took away everything she had, <laughs> and then they rubbed it in her face. He, tip, super villain tip number three: Don't do that thing <laughs> because it's funny when you it's funny when you do it to uh, uh, Batman because he's kind of broken and you have a relationship, but you do it just for giggles with Superman, and he you know rips your head off and kicks you into orbit. Well. Just you don't take away. Just everything. tears your heart out and then takes over the yeah. entire planet in a totalitarian regime that lasts seven years. Yeah. Look it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, never, never take away, uh, take away everything a good person has, is because you won't get a villain. You get something much worse. <laughs> but. Um, wow, the chat is being cynical right now. <laughs> what cops being complicit? <gasps> oh, the <Yep>. shock. <laughs> oh, I, I am remiss. I actually was so enthused with the lecture that I forgot one of the more important parts early on in the scene, which mm -hmm. is our, uh, the uh, elder mystic mm -hmm. walking barefoot through the streets of New Orleans, uh, spraying, uh, spraying rum upon her path, and then marking out uh, voodoo symbols on the ground. Mm -hmm. And what she's doing is she's... Wasting rum? No, she's purifying, she's purifying the path, and she's searching. She's searching for something. And it, 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 at each marker, she moves off in a new direction. Now she's barefoot; she's connected to the earth. And I watch this because I'm like, I'm like thinking, man, if I was in New Orleans and I saw someone doing this, I'd be like, I, I wouldn't interfere, but I'd be on the sidelines watching. Like, and if someone came up to us, I'd be like, no, 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 she's doing a thing. Like, <laughs> leave her alone. Actually, I got to stick a pen in you yeah. right now because we have a new person in the chat, oh. or should I say, um, henchman. You were talking? Yep. Stop. Jammer time. How you doing, Jammer Time 1? <laughs> we're up there. <laughs> and again, you can uh, check out the beginning of the show after we're done with all that stuff. But let us continue. <laughs> and she eventually finds the source of whatever it is she's searching for, which is a rocks on. Rocks pipe. off? Pipe. Mm -hmm. Just in the, like an alley, just randomly there. And she mm -hmm. looks at it and she gets this look like, oh, no, 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 no. This is bad. <laughs> well, the elder mystics are always the first ones in any yeah. story, any story mm -hmm. whatsoever, to go, ha ha, you guys are on an adventure. You guys do that, I'll be right back. Y'all in trouble. She goes home. Avita, Avita finds her, is worried. She keeps explaining Avita that something horrible is coming, and the only thing can stop it is the divine parent. And we have to find his other half. And Avita's like, I can do it. And she's like, you have to ask your boy if he knows who it is. And you can tell Avita doesn't want to do it, but she's a good apprentice, and she's going to. Now. Oh, this is the episode that uh, we had my favorite shot in the entire series. And I know you're going to yeah, comment yeah, on it. Yep, I Because uh, that, yeah, that, that, that was the favorite one. Yeah. yeah. If so, you guys want to know what we're talking about... Um, <laughs> No. Anyway, continue. So, uh, so, Tandy's Tandy's getting into people's heads and uh, ripping out their hope. Uh, Ty, uh, he can't hold it together anymore. And remember his friend who beat him, beat him with uh, baseball bats and locked him in a closet because he. Uh, you say friends, I say teammates. But yeah, go on. Yeah. Well, I was friends. Because <laughs> afterwards he said, "Hey, bro, we cool?" And he was like, "Yeah, yeah, we're good." Well, he bumps into Ty and then suddenly decides to make a deal about it. And Ty's, that, that Ty snaps and just starts. He doesn't just beat the dude. He beats <laughs> the dude. He tunes him up as, as, good, as, as good as he got. And it is, you can tell he is just losing it. Because mm -hmm. he, he spent his entire life trying to be good. And he realizes it doesn't make a difference. Well... He feels yes. that he doesn't make a difference. And we'll talk about that. Well, no, I say it yeah. because he specifically brings that up. Mm -hmm. He has that conversation. 
So he he starts getting in discussion with his uh, his priest slash teacher. They gets heated. Ty takes a swing at him, grabs him, and then suddenly Ty finds him in his priest's fear. Mm-hmm. And we discover that the priest killed. I don't know if it was his family or someone else's family in a drunk driving accident. And he's still he's still there in the car, sitting among the bo- the bodies, sipping his flask. That's where he is every moment of every day, mm-hmm. in in the center of his pain and failure, which is pretty poignant. And then Ty like sees a church and notices there's light coming from the church, and he's like, "Huh, that's weird. I normally don't see like <laughs> an angelic music when I do this. I should go take a look." And he opens up, and suddenly he's in Tandy's beautiful church, church, watching Tandy tear it apart. And he's like, "What are you?" doing because he takes one look at this and he knows that she is ripping someone's soul apart mm-hmm. and she's like what are you doing here get out of here he just yeah and again we gotta say poor dude poor 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 dude from episodes one and two because yeah. all he did was love her yeah, that's his, all his greatest hope is to have a beautiful wedding with tandy and she's like i'm gonna reward this <laughs> by tearing it down yeah rip shredding it and giving you like i just keep thinking of harry pa- uh, not harry Potter, harry dresden when you take emotional damage your soul is literally torn mm-hmm. and that is that that's what i'm thinking when this is happening she's like it doesn't hurt him i'm like uh yeah yeah it does but it actually hurts him deeper than you can possibly yeah. understand but that's okay because she is 16 yeah you know that's one of the things like again i was watching punisher season two and i kept having to remind myself wait she's 16 she's 16 they're teenagers teenagers by their very nature are dumb I was, my parents was, my kids were, we all were dumb at 16. (laughs) So um, Ty Ty stops her and uh, flash forward, Ty is not in a good place. Avita's like, we need to talk. And he's like, I do not want to have this talk. Like, like, like dealing with relationship weirdness is the absolute last thing <laughs> on my mind right now. And I, and yeah, you know, cause you know, whenever your girlfriend comes up to you and goes, we have to talk. You're like, nah, <laughs> like, like nah, bro, not, not yeah, right now, bro. Especially bruh. when he, with what he's dealing with, he's like, uh, no. And she's like, no, and really, it, we need to talk. I need to ask you. <gasps> and it's like, you know what? If you go and dump me, just do it by text. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. just, just. Because he has no idea that she really does need to talk to him. And it's very important. It has nothing to do with, about, you know, the fact that he didn't ask her out to the dance or whatever. Mm-hmm. And just about as she's about to say the critical piece of engine, hey, Tandy comes running up and starts yelling at him to, like, get out of my head. And he's like, I don't like being in your head. Why would I want to be in your head? <laughs> like, it is a dark and ugly place in there. I don't go there on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so they're having this crazy conversation right in front of Evita. And Vita's like, looking back and forth with him. And then is like, and, and like, telling her, like, uh, Ty's having some time, maybe screaming girl. Maybe you can go away and leave him alone because she is like crashing school to do this. Mm-hmm. Well, that just pisses off uh, Avita. Uh, well, no, this is pisses off uh, yeah. Tandy. Here so we Tandy go. reacts the way she normally does, which is to jump into Avita's head. Yeah, let's take a look and try to try to destroy her dreams and shred her soul. In there. Obviously, you do. Hey. Strangely aggressive, tiny girl. <laughs> Ty's having a pretty awful day, so maybe you can yell at him another time. Can you just stay out of this? Oh, no, I don't think so. No. You want to get the hell out of here. For you guys in the back, if a girlfriend, I don't care if she's black, Jewish, Puerto Rican, um, Pakistani, or anything like that, <laughs> if she says get away from her man and she grabs you to keep you from walking forward, that is a hint and a half. Yeah, because the next thing comes the knife or the earrings are coming off. The Vaseline is going on and a whole lot of people are going to be throwing a whole lot of one dollar bills because it is going to get either ugly or beautiful. Let's get back to that scene. And this is the, I love this scene. Of course. Oh, she wants to be a pediatrician. She's going to be a doctor. She's going to stay alive. That's all she wants to do. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, and yep. 
<laughs> and she's like, "Wait a minute, what part of what part of Apprentice <laughs> Witch do you people not get?" Yeah, it, it's very much the well. I'm gonna take your hope and take your dream. And sure enough, the adult version of her looks at Spiritual Tandy, going, "Girl, what you doing? The hell out of my office!" And it was like, "You can't, you." Okay, uh, you're his girlfriend, and. I should leave campus now. <laughs> that is the one and the only correct answer. Yeah. Tell her what she wants, and Johnny. Of course, uh, uh, Avita figures out. Oh my God, you're the other one. You're the, the crazy girl who keeps hanging out with him, <laughs> talking about weird telepathic powers, and now you just tried to shred my soul, and I caught you at it. And in retrospect, I should have figured that out three yeah. episodes yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, later on, we, later on, we see uh, Evita carving Tandy's doll. Mm -hmm. Carving it out of white wax to go with uh, the black 3D the print. black 3D print, which I actually thought was a very nice uh, juxtaposition because he is darkness, she is light. And Avita obviously knows she's light. She was there. She felt like <laughs> And uh, also the kind of the digital versus the analog. Mm. Oh, okay. One is, one is more the masculine, a little more sharper curve, sharper edges. The feminine, more sculpted curves. So there's a lot of duality going. They're playing on the duality, mm -hmm. and I really like that. Also. Okay. So, now that revelation that you had a few minutes ago. What what was that? Okay. That that whole okay. thing. Okay. So. Uh, oh uh, well. First, let me just finish off the synopsis real quick. Uh, okay. We'll go back yeah. to the revelation. Spoilers. So anyway, um, so. We continue to get a running narrative of the hero's journey, and uh, after this big confrontation, Tandy runs back to her boyfriend, who she kind of just left half brain, brain shredded, and uh, discovers that he flipped out, went crazy in a fit of rage, destroyed everything in the church, and in doing so, found her stash, took it, and took off, because guess what? He has no more hope. <laughs> And uh, she kind of looks at it and is like, well, I kind of did this one to myself. <laughs> and then they talk about the heroes, the hero rising to challenge and becoming the hero they were always meant to be. And there's a moment where Tandy's looking at her own reflection and we have that nice duality of Ty looking at his reflection in a puddle. And then uh, Tandy has this kind of smile like she's going to pick herself, like she's actually going to do the hero's journey. And that's where we end it. Hoping, hoping that Tandy can grow up just a little bit and, you know, be half a good a person as Ty is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because she even, when Ty confronts her about what she's doing, she even says the line, like, he's like, what are you doing? And she's like, I am, I'm doing, I'm just like my mom, doing what I always do with my mom. My, like, my mom, I take, I'm, I'm being a bitch and taking it out on those around me. And when I was saying that earlier in the, in the show, I had the epiphany of, oh, she's also like her dad. She's upset. She's angry, angry. So she starts beating up those closest to her. And I was like, I didn't catch that at the time. Later, I'm like, oh, wow, that. And the sins of the father will be visited yeah. upon the son even till the seventh generation, like, dude. I, I didn't see that sneak in, but I'm like, wow, this show really does just like to gut punch <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you know it's fighting against that stigma of comic books are for kids cool mm -hmm. let's tell your kids some real stuff yeah, yeah and take yeah, a look and then Ty Ty has that argument with his mom because Ty, Ty's mom is like what are you doing you're you're making noise you're getting noticed you need to stop this and he's like why and she goes because the reason why we didn't make any big deal about it before is because if there's a cop so well connected that he can make a murder of a child go away? <laughs> what makes you think he won't make you go away if you make out, if you get too noisy? And he's like, and finally he says, "But well, you said it yourself, mom. Even if I do everything right, even if I'm perfect, they're still gonna they're still gonna get rid of me. They're still bad things are still gonna happen. So why be perfect?" And mom is kind of sitting up there going, "Exactly. So don't help him." Yep. If you're going to be on fire one day, don't cover yourself in gasoline. And this is this is really important. Now, don't get me wrong. Well, let's take a look at this scene real quick. It meant nothing to them. It still doesn't. And what you did... I had backup. We got him on tape. You had a white cop 
on tape confessing to killing a black kid. Have you been paying attention, Tyrone? Because in the world that we live in, that means absolutely nothing. So I should just what? Throw my hands up and give up? Is that what you're saying? You put yourself in their crosshairs again. Someone has to. Otherwise, nothing will change. I've already lost one son, Tyrone. And if I don't stand up, it will be for nothing. Watch your mouth. Pull your pants up. Take your hoodie down. When does it end? We got all sorts of rules, but you said it best. Even if I do everything perfect, they still could come after me. And that's the line. Yep. That's the line. And then the punch, the punch point to punctuate the scene. SWAT shows up, starts bullhorning at the house. He is under arrest for murdering a cop, <laughs> and demands that he comes out. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, <laughs> I'm a white suburbanite, so I thank you for recognizing yeah, that. I'm a white suburbanite, so I don't necessarily have the best frame of reference, but I do think. Then when cops stop, loudly announce to the entire world that you are wanted for murdering a police officer <laughs> and say, come out, before then drawing their guns and charging you, you are about to be murdered 150 times. Maybe 140. Yeah. Depends on the weather. All the while screaming, stop resisting, and gun, gun, gun. Yeah, you kind of caught that. Not that this show is heavy-handed or anything, but I did warn you when I assigned you this show, it's going to be hard to watch. Yeah. Um, the only part I found unbelievable was is they were stupid enough to not put anyone around the back of the house, and he ran out the back of the house, unless that was for some reason the thing they wanted to happen, but I didn't get that impression. Don't be that guy. Come on, buddy. Come on. Well, I was, I was, I was waiting. Uh, personally, I figured it was going to be that they were going to rush in, and, and, and he was either going to go by himself, either teleport out, or possibly take his mom with him because that would be a that would be the the terrifying stressful situation because even though he's not there it doesn't mean that they're not going to take down his mom that's true that that so, and again just leaving that much open is a testament yeah. to good writing and i'm not going to lie i am totally smitten with gloria yeah. rubin i really am she is just yeah. and she she's is, also falling apart in this episode oh yeah because she's yelling at her at her at her at her uh at her, 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 her boys <laughs> yeah and, and at her she's husband losing, and yeah, she's 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 you know. falling apart as well no one in this episode in this episode no one is happy except narcotics cop and he's he's smug and as, as we will get to mr fisk that really me <laughs> really hope he gets his comeuppance right so i gotta ask what would you give this episode i honestly don't know um we talked about this off camera and the pro part of the problem is if i had been binge watching the show i really would have needed that pause and have the narration on the hero's journey to kind of calm me down and pull me back otherwise i would have been pacing the floor and screaming at the tv okay but because i'm watching this episodically i had a whole week to kind of calm down relax so then having that narrative broken to explain to me what was going on felt a little heavy-handed okay but i do realize that the show was filmed specifically to be benched so part of me didn't appreciate so i have two minds part of me like i don't need you to like lecture me on this and the other part of me is like actually if i've been watching this on one go i would have needed you to lecture me this <laughs> so um so i'm also really really annoyed at the content but now i know i'm supposed to be like that's part of the journey and the next episode will be the payoff just keep watching so um i have so part of me is like eh, it's not a great episode and part of me is like it's an awesome episode so i honestly don't know where to rate this hmm well, I'm, uh, it's one of those things like I might actually have to revisit this and watch it again to, to see how I feel when second viewing when I'm not just like so like what? well see truth be told I had to give this one a flush yeah. I really had to give this one a flush because um, you can tell it's building up to something and it's like okay we're doing this we're kind of being heavy handed but wait this is the penultimate episode the finale is the next episode yeah. so it's kind of setting up everything but it's going well, you know the next episode's got to be awesome in order for us to get another season. So we got a few more things to say. Yeah. So what am I going to do? 
I'm going to tell you all this, so gut punch, gut punch, gut punch, arrow to the knee, arrow to the knee, <laughs> arrow to the knee. Now, the next episode is going to be awesome. So <laughs> I'm kind of like, you know. It better be. You didn't You didn't have to hurt me as bad or you would, you would have gotten like a four of a kind or a full house. But uh, since I understand that you're just hurting me to help me appreciate the next episode, I'll give you a flush. I'll just give you a regular yeah. old flush. That that's where I sat with it. But yeah, uh, I, I I'm really annoyed at Tandy being Tandy, <laughs> but she is true to the character. And, yeah. Uh, I feel I just keep feeling so sorry sorry for Ty because Ty Ty can't catch a break. No, no, he can't. <laughs> that's kind of the thing. He is the purveyor of darkness, and he needs some darkness that goes through. <laughs> So, yeah, it's a tough one. Well, I'm expecting your rating um, at least next week. Yeah, mm -hmm. next week, you know, open up with your rating next week. So, all right. Well, in order to um, in order to catch you guys up, last week's episode of Daredevil was a whole lot of consequences from the battle at the bulletin or massacre at the newspaper. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and um so whole lot of stuff going down but last week was all about the consequences where a whole lot of stuff happened and we had two major climactic moments being karen page playing guess what i know about you with kingpin yeah. <laughs> and um dangerous and game, by the way. <laughs> oh it's a very dangerous game ask my cousin um, Corporal Pyle, and um, <laughs> and of course the revelation of Daredevil finding out that the nun that's been taking care of him this entire time was his mama. He was actually raised by his own mama, and he didn't even know. <laughs> yeah, that that one's kind of a brain melter because, like, at some point you couldn't have felt to tell me. Yeah, yeah, that that's yeah. So this episode, um. <laughs> I'm just going to give a really quick synopsis of all this jazz. But um, Matt confronts the fact that Maddie is his mother. <laughs> they confront, and we're treated to a flashback scene of how his parents got together, which was kind of cool, and it happened before Maddie took her vows to be a nun. Okay, that was my first real question on that Yes, one. yes, it happened. Um, but he confronts the fact that, his, that that's his mom and that she has been raising him, and she never told him when he was a child, um, when he was in law school, and he's a little bit mad about that. But we do get to see um, the history. Now, Agent Nadine goes to Internal Affairs to report Dexter to take responsibility for his accidentally making the FBI complicit in Kingpin's plan, and he's there with his supervisor, and um, and he thinks that things are going to go good. And, of course, um, well, you know, one of the things that happens with that is when Matt confronts, uh, he confronts the priest that knew for his whole life, his ma, he confronts um, the memory of his father, and they have a nice, long, long argument where his dad is going, look, we're cursed. He she didn't just leave you she left me um she left us both because we're cursed the devil's inside us and you know i died because i have a code and i wanted to show you that it's better to die with a code than it is to live and compromise your integrity and matt's like yeah but you still left and you let your ego get in the way of a lifetime with your son good job <laughs> and he's just a little bit mad on this one um thanks yeah well hey it's a thing you know um and then and all of this is happening in his head in the way that he's having flashbacks with kingpin and of course now he's arguing with kingpin and his dad because part of daredevil is that the guilt of being catholic and in that situation has driven him crazy and within this crazy he has said you know what i do live by this code and i thought i was the good guy because i never killed anyone that stops with fisk <laughs> so he's going to kill wilson fisk meanwhile um, Agent Nadim turns himself in. Uh, uh, he calls up his supervisor. They get internal affairs down there for the FBI, and they're like, "Look, I'm, I'm, I'm mad." Yeah, he's like, "Look, boss, um, Kingpin's been playing us, um, and oh. I've got proof and all that stuff." Thank you. Yeah, 
And then his boss says, okay, we've got everything on tape. This is fantastic. Is there anything else you want to add? And he's like, no, that's the whole thing. I take full responsibility for my part in being complicit in all this. And she says, okay, that's very good. Hey, what are you doing with that gun? Hey, put that down. What are you doing? And she takes out her gun and kills the internal affairs agent and makes it so that the audio recording makes it sound a lot like Agent Nadine did it. Because, yes, his boss, the one he's been talking to since episode one, has been on Kingpin's take the entire time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, he then finds out he's now on the Wilson Fisk task force for taking out mob bosses that compete with Wilson Fisk. And he gets to see how far the rabbit hole goes. It turns out half of the FBI in that area has been on Kingpin's take because of blackmail. And he's asking his boss, how did you, wh why? Why would you do this? And she's like, you know, I had three kids at one time. And they were hit, uh, they were killed in a hit and run. <clears throat> There's no escape in this guy. He's, he's mar he marked you a year ago. Why do you think that before the show, your sister lost her health insurance and you were put in the financial bind <laughs> and you did everything that you could to get this promotion and you fought as hard as anybody would not have fought to get Fisk everything that he's been demanding for this deal. So there's no way out. He owns you. And the only reason that I keep working for him is because my kids are already dead. I divorced my husband. Maybe he'll be okay if I cooperate. Think about your wife and kids. For those of you guys listening, the henchman is steaming right I'm, now. I'm, I'm, I'm apoplectic. Because <laughs> two reasons. Two reasons. One, huh? for evil to succeed, good men just have to do nothing. And two, she has learned the wrong lesson. <laughs> oh, Fisk killed my children so that he could corrupt me. That was his object lesson. So don't, so do everything he says or he'll kill your wife and child. No, your wife and child are already dead. <laughs> They are only alive as long as Fisk thinks that is a better carrot than you being at their funeral, as we've just been illustrating. <laughs> we've proven that there is no integrity. There is no system. He is beyond it all. He is Satan incarnate. <laughs> he is, and everyone goes, but we can't stop him. He's too powerful. He's too right. And you know what can stop him? 40 FBI agents <laughs> with shotguns. If that doesn't stop them, you call Tony Stark and say, hey, <laughs> we have a problem. I think there's a scroll. Could you, I don't know, nuke it from orbit? <laughs> well, moving on. Karen, after having that conversation with Fisk and Foggy, says, you know what? It might be smart if I got the heck out of New York. <laughs> and, of course, Foggy, in his ever-optimism, is going, no, you don't have to run. If you run from him, that's what he wants. You'll be vulnerable. You'll be alone. Do what I do. Be so public that he can't touch you. And she's like, um, you just get on his nerves. I killed his best friend. <laughs> um... Uh, leaving is my best yeah, option. Yeah. He, he was annoyed, <laughs> and he had a dude murder an entire newspaper with paper clips. <laughs> you know? And so she's like, I'm getting out of here right before I tell Matt that, or right after I tell Matt that I kind of betrayed him by accidentally letting on to Kingpin that I knew that he was Daredevil. <laughs> like Kingpin didn't already know, but, you know, she kind of confirmed yeah. it. So she goes to talk to Sister Maggie, and Maggie is like, sorry, he left. And she's like, no, but, I, and I'm leaving, because, oh, this, and, and, uh, 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 she starts singing trap music, you know, and, and I'm gonna leave, and, 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 all my friends are dead, all my friends are dead, and, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know so um and sister maggie's like well he found out i was his mama and i've been lying to him his whole life so he's kind of in a bad place but you're gonna have to find him you can't leave because he's hurting and he needs a friend and as a favor to a failed mother and nun because i know i know i could have told him when he was a kid but 
they didn't know anything about postpartum depression back then and I was a danger to my son so I thought it would be best to leave him with his dad because I was going through postpartum depression and I felt like I cheated on God and there was my sin crying and pooping its pants so I I left and and I thought you know I thought it would have been best I didn't want to hurt my son by letting him know that I abandoned him so I kept it secret but then when his dad died and he came to the orphanage I could have told him then but I thought it would only hurt him more and then after he became an adult I thought I could tell him the truth but the truth is I'm a coward I'm just too much of a coward to let it know and I forgot that he could hear me from three rooms away when I was praying so I messed up let me do something good for you let me try and help my son some way I can well, I see where Matt gets his guilt <laughs> oh my god I could have told you at any time <laughs> then I couldn't keep wallowing in my shame <laughs> Yeah, literally, like, Aww. there was another nun behind her the entire time with a bell just going, Ding, shame! Ding, shame! Ding, shame! I mean, so, I, <laughs> honestly, honestly, I thought, well, if she had become pregnant while she had taken a, with her vows, that would have been much more of a scandal, and I could understand why she would renounce the child mm -hmm. and, you know, all that other stuff. But at the same time, the diocese would not have put her own kid in her own orphanage. That's just... Stupid. One, it was the early 80s, and two, Hell's Kitchen is small. There was one church, one orphanage, one neighborhood. Yes, so. Hell's Kitchen is small. Drive 12 blocks. Oh, to Queens? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have, her, have her be raised next to Spider-Man. See how that works. Oh, yeah. no, he would, have been, he would have been the, you know, I don't know, sonar kid or something. And besides, we wouldn't have got the Ninja Turtles, so shut your face. <laughs> now, um, so yeah, so with this, we pop in on Foggy. Okay. And Foggy is just like, all right, um, with the speech that he gave at the police dinner um, where Karen was supposed to report, but she went to say, hey, um, what was his name? Willie, guess what I know. Um, well, people were filming that. It went viral, and he has the support of the police department, so he looks like he's a good candidate for the running for actually winning the race to be DA. Oh, oh you know? so what you're saying is he has Fisk's support. No, no, no. He has, like, street level. Because Fisk corrupts people from the supervisor. He takes over He takes over the heads of departments. Uh, you know, you see what I mean? He yeah. takes over the people with power. Foggy's got the support of a lot of people on the ground. You know? And, um, and he goes to the family butcher shop, and they're having the party going, Yeah, our little boy's going to be a thing. And his brother pulls him aside saying, Hey, bro, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, this is great. This is great. You better apologize. See, here's the thing. Um, while you were in law school, we fell on some hard times, and for some reason, um, all, of our all of our distribution companies just stopped delivering to us, and, and we couldn't make our bills because we didn't have anything to sell. We went to loan officers and banks. They said no. Then one bank came up out of nowhere, and Foggy's like, ugh. And he's like, well, you see what happened? He's like, just keep talking. Just just go on. Yeah, I see yeah. where this is going. <laughs> yeah, and, well, yeah, there's all this. And some British guy came up and, you know, because the bank that gave us the loan said all we had to do was move numbers around on the thing and it'll make us look like we have more assets. And Foggy's like, no, no, no. And, and you know, then, yeah, you got the loan and your distributors started calling back. Yeah, yeah, that that's pretty much what happened. So British guy came in, said, I have to apologize or else you're going to go to jail. And he's like, not just me. Mom and dad signed the loan papers, too. Not <laughs> enough fire. <laughs> so we cut back to Nadim. <laughs> And Nadim and Poindexter has have had the talk. Yeah, I, yeah, and, and, I, I, yeah? I, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm just <laughs> at this point, I just want to grab the camera on live television and go, look, we all know you are working for Fisk. We all know. It's like, I've, I've crunched the numbers. 270% of the population of Hell's Kitchen work for Fisk. No, no, trust me. It makes sense. I'll show you the numbers later. So everyone knows you work for Fisk. We all know Fisk runs Queens. So let's stop lying about it and just say Fisk is the queen, the king of Queens. Everyone go, we'll hashtag it. We'll make it big. We'll go to the floor of the Senate and say the king of Queens 
has said, you don't get to come into New York anymore until you talk to the king. And we'll just let, oh, I don't know, the federal government figure it out. I'm done. I'm done. Well. If you can't beat them, come their greatest fan. Your number one guy. He's generally not this animated. I'm just letting you guys know. Uh, we've been friends for like 17 years now, and I have never seen him this apoplectic. It's springtime and my dander is up. Okay. Well, you know what? Your puny fist is no match for my mighty magnum. Anyway. You will <laughs> never forgive me for that. And nor should you. <laughs> Hey, it's not like we're grinding steel. Speaking of grinding steel, <laughs> that one was. <laughs> let's um. Now we check in on Agent Dexter, okay? Uh -huh. And Dexter is kind of like, all right, now I'm working for the Kingpin. I know you're working for the Kingpin now in the scene. And by the way, your family still likes me, as you discovered, as you know, you find out that I'm in because I'm at your house now. I'm talking to your wife and kids, kind of letting you know, hey, you know I'm corrupt. I know you're kind of corrupt, but I also know your family. Just saying. Newspaper, paper clips, family. Um, and this actually, get that whole thing with Agent Nazim and Internal Affairs, Dex is back on the job. He's been reinstated, and he's like, by the way, that lawyer distraction, that was cold, dude. <laughs> that was really cold. <laughs> and um, and Dex has like some of the best passive-aggressive lines, like, thank you guys so much for supporting me. I wouldn't be here today without all of your help, especially Agent Nadim. I'm really going to pay you back for everything you've done, man. Everything you've done. And um, so, yeah. <laughs> So Nadim yeah. ends up on the payroll and he has the talk with the boss and they're going to Kingpin's secret hideout that's downstairs from his penthouse and they have a great scene of dominance where the boss is like, all right, how you doing, Mr. Fisk? Let me take that anklet, that house arrest anklet off you because part of the strike force to get all of the mobsters that aren't Kingpin has worked. And she starts to take off Fisk's um, house arrest bracelet and he's like, no. I want Agent Nadim to do it. But in order to take off a house of race thing, you gotta get on your knees. So Nadim gets on his knees and undoes the house arrest bracelet and Kingpin and take Nadim's me boss walk. Swear your fealty to your new lord and master. <gasps> Symbolism. <laughs> and um and sure oh. enough, this meeting is of all the other mob bosses. And he's like, by the way. Um, Kingpin sent me, Dex says, because, one, let's get you cleaned up. I'll cover with your wife because of that bullet wound I put in you. And, um, yeah, no, um, Fisk wants the dude who helped you break into my house. I don't know how to get a hold of him. Yeah, yeah, sure you don't. All right, anyway, come on, let's, let's, let's go do this. And so Kingpin and Dex <coughs> and Nazim go to the meeting from the Godfather Act 3 and... Nassim goes in and it was like, yeah, now call up your friend and let him know where we are. <laughs> and Dex is like, you sure this is a good idea? And Kingpin's like, he'll know it's a trap and he'll come anyway. Because that's how he rolls. I know him. I know him a lot. You, on the other hand, be ready. And, of course, <clears throat> the other mob bosses are sitting around a table surrounded by FBI agents going, what is this? And the Italian chick, the Italian, or the head of the Italian families, who you might recognize from Luke Cage season, seasons one and two, are like, something weird is going on because this is the FBI, but we got brought to a bar. Uh, we didn't get taken into the station. And if they wanted to kill us, they would have done it a half hour ago. So I'm interested to see how this plays out. And of course, Kingpin walks in and he's like, hi. I'm here to offer all you guys my protection. My protection from the federal government. My protection from the FBI. And uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> at that point, I'm like, uh, sir? Yes? Uh, what about protection from you? Like, <laughs> like, just want to let you know, like, like, I'm down. I just want to be... You know, make keep you happy. That's so how I know don't you don't worry. know what crime is, because <laughs> you never ask for assurances against the guy that's running the protection racket on you. And one of the guys is like, "Yeah, you and your big high tower building in your penthouse and your FBI agents and, and all that stuff. I don't what, trust but, you." Then he gets killed by what a uh, bottle cap. 
Um, did you watch this episode? No, because just as soon as because you always have to have <laughs> my boss who's like, you don't scare me, this. you don't have any real. P-. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Actually, a thing comes out of nowhere, pink, middle of the head. He falls down, and the Italian woman is like, "So, what's the what's the money?" He's like, "Twenty percent of everything y'all make." And of course, then we get the dude. You can't dare to burn to dare to burn. I will burn to dare to burn to burn burn burn. And words like my descriptions can't do it justice. They they really can't yeah. because I'm um, sorry. I'm also thinking twenty percent. That's all. Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. But it's twenty percent everything. But the whole thing is, um, you know, that's a fifth. <laughs> that's one fifth of everything. Um. That that the dude that's supposed to be in prison is saying, you know, yeah, I, I can run things from wherever, and you owe me yeah. a fifth of everything. But he also just said immunity to federal prosecution. Yeah, that's epic. So let's take yeah. a yeah, let's take a look. <clears throat> and prosecutions by the federal government. Bullshit. This is a sting. <laughs> I don't trust hey, it. If you can hear this on tape. Totally innocent. <laughs> I don't even know these people. Great. How much? What's the vid? Twenty percent. For Christ's sake! Of everything. Ouch! I don't know how you keep that suit white with all the bullshit you pack into it. I know. What I really is. like living. We all. I am a crime boss that likes living. You want us to that confess what I'm to doing? something that buys you another mm. month in that I hotel you suite you conned jacket. yourself into? No. No, I like you living. Can count and Ar- me out. Army Ernie is amazing. Yeah. It wasn't even like it was like it was was that an ashtray? <laughs> Does it matter? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm like I'm a crime boss. I said was was that an ashtray? You know. But I will have to say, um, and then Kingpin, in true administrative fashion, um, does what any good administrator would do. (sighs) See, I got Daredevil behind me. The tax is now 25%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, ooh, dead. Uh, mm, ah, twenty-five percent. It, it's. I don't know. Maybe it's me because I grew up in the ghetto and I have a black mom. But it's like I want twenty percent of what you make. Twenty percent. I'm not gonna give that. Oh, yeah. Twenty-five percent. Do I hear thirty? You know. And of course, Carter does exactly what any smart person would do. I only got one question. Where do I drop the cash? Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, yep. That's exactly. That, that, well, <laughs> they just killed a dude with an ashtray. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And um so yeah, so at the end of this, Daredevil um infiltrates Fisk's secret base and I'm kind of going, "All right, so what? They take off the thing and they cut all the cameras, they do all that stuff and it turns out while Fisk is gone, the person that's running his surveillance thing is the one wearing the anklet. And so the door opens and she's like, are you going to kill me now? And Daredevil is like, not you, just him. She's like, Fisk? No. She turns around, sees it's Daredevil. It's like, oh, well, you can't be here. He's going to be back. And he's like, I know. How long? Minutes. And then all the stuff comes back on because Fisk is in the building. And it says, Karen Page has been found at the church over on that street that we've been looking at for the whole time. Make sure that no uh, squad cars go into that area for about a half hour. End of episode. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. So I, I, I've just decided to. Like, I, I went all the way from annoyed to crazy to rage to <laughs> Malkavian. And uh, now I'm at, yeah, you know, in my mind, I'm just making, I'm making a new villain in my head which i'm just gonna call the spoiler so uh that's copy written by dc that's robin's girlfriend all right we're renaming him as intellectual property violator that works that's actually open yeah who uh 
who's got two superpowers, and one is because if he doesn't have it, he wouldn't last 18 seconds. <laughs> he's nigh invulnerable. And the other one, he is a receiving telepath. <laughs> and in going that, that all Marvel characters must suffer, he can't control his receiving telepathy. Everything just <laughs> pours into his head constantly. So to share the pain, he just spouts out everything that's popping into his head. So he just walks around sharing everyone's secrets. Like, hey, isn't this great? He Isn't this great? He's taking you out for ice cream. and can, uh, It's not only because he feels guilty about treating on you with his boss. <laughs> uh, and yeah. then the bullets just bounce off. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a thousand different poisons, and I bet the geeks me out with no 15 of them. Um, so, yeah. But I got to give this episode a serious, serious four of a kind. Yeah, yeah, to, to, it's, it, and I gotta say, it's good. It's good because it's making me crazy. Yeah, that's exactly it. it. it, it I, again, people, I'm raging and I'm getting all bombastic <laughs> about it, but it's because I care. And they do a good job of making me care about the characters, care about the story, and get engaged. If I wasn't engaged, i.e., if you read my rant on Decker's on the book, Mars, I turned the show off and never watched it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, nah, that's we're done. true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, but um, this one, it wasn't just engaging. It was very few shows, especially um, a lot of long TV dramas. One of the things it doesn't show is they talk a lot. The bad guy, bad, bad guy, bad, bad guy, bad. But this one takes TV, which lives on exposition and dialogue, and it uses the movie formula of show, don't tell. Mm -hmm. And by this point in the show, in, in the series, everywhere you turn, like, they go, all right. They've run this script past some five-year-olds. And the, every time, <laughs> like, seriously, yeah. because everything that at least a five-year-old will go, well, why doesn't he just do this? Take a note. Because that guy works for Fisk. Well, why wouldn't he do that? Oh, because Kingpin has deck gone. Well, why wouldn't he do that? Because mm -hmm. that. So everywhere you, go, every time you try and use the system, you see that the system is corrupt in a new and interesting way. Mm -hmm. But you still have enough faith in the system to see like the system is only corrupt like thirty percent. That that's a big thing. It's a thirty percent. It's like thirty percent of your body being messed up. Like, I would say my, it's more like. 25%. <laughs> exactly. But like, you know, right now, uh, at this moment in time on February 18th, my arm and my shoulder hurt like you would not believe, but the rest of my body is okay. So it's just like that where you're looking and it's like, nope, that's still shoulder. No, <laughs> that's still shoulder. No, that's still, no, that's elbow. That hurts too. No, that's bicep. Isn't that between shoulder and elbow? Yeah, that's kind of messed up too. You know, but you're thinking, well, if I go further up, uh, uh, if I go far up or far enough past the shoulder, I'll hit the back and the back is fine. The neck is okay. Just where does it start? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's got to be one of those things. So it's like, you know what? No, I'm going to turn myself in. I'm going to take responsibility for my actions. Crap, that was part of his plan. Um, well, I'm going to... Well, well, the only thing we haven't touched on is, well, oh yeah, Kingpin? What do you do if I just kill myself? I'm going to kill your wife and kids. Well, what if I kill him first? You know, it hasn't gone that far yet. <laughs> but... um. But yeah, that's about the only thing, because it's like, well, he's still under arrest. He's in jail. Technically, he's under house arrest. He's under federal. He's under federal scrutiny. He's watched twenty four hours a day. He's got a whole FBI team ready to put bullets in him. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. So um. And, I, and the thing, the thing, the thing that shows that Fisk is a really good mastermind is this episode. In this episode, is the fact that. It comes to light that he creates the vulnerability to let him corrupt people. Oh, why do you think you were having financial problems? He engineered that so that you would be in a vulnerable position so that then he could take over. I'm glad that you pointed that out yeah. because a lot of uh, that that gets past a lot of people. It's like, no, 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 here's the thing. I did a psychological profile on you for five or six years. You love your family, so if I have a chance to screw with your family, I can take you over. You are psychologically unstable, <clears throat> looking for a father figure. So 
I've got to push you to the edge to where you need a father figure so I can step in. Bullseye. Um, you over here. Yeah, you love your family and all that stuff. Oh, wouldn't it suck if your kids got hit by a car? And one of the brilliant things about this so far is that Marvel have established this since season one of Daredevil. Yeah. Um, in The Defenders, um, Matt goes to Kingpin saying, what do you know about Madame Gao? And, and Kingpin's like, you don't know that I run this place, and I'm not going to let you know that I run this place, but I do want you to know that I kind of run this place. And um, <laughs> in season two of Daredevil, they arrest the Punisher. The Punisher goes into jail, and then all these people try and kill the Punisher, and they have the hallway fight of him killing a bunch of inmates, and Fisk goes, I almost run this place completely except for this one dude. I bet if I have the Punisher kill him, and then I let the Punisher out of jail... I'll run this place completely. And then he does. Mm -hmm. And the Punisher is like, you know, what makes you think that I'm going to go out? Oh, you just want me on the streets to kill every scumbag that's out there so that when you come out, you don't have any competition. And, and Kingpin's like, you want to get out of here or not? You know, don't you have a job to do? It's like, well, if you let me out, if you can let me out of here, why don't you leave? And he says the words because you want out in order to fight a war. When I leave, I intend on winning it. Yeah. And that was two years ago. Yeah. Now he's out. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like... And all, all the stuff that's been in motion in all, in, in all of the uh, Hell's Kitchen uh, universe yeah. is coming together. And that, that's, actually, that, that's good writing. Mm -hmm. That's good coordination. So sad, that is frustrating TV. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So yeah, so I have to give this. I have to give like this this episode. And, and that, by the way, ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen, is the difference between a villain and a super villain. Yeah, yeah. And seriously, I this one definitely gets. Um, this one gets a four of a kind. A four yeah. of a kind. Yeah, seriously, I can, I, I can see it. Um, now, how many more episodes do you have? You have like three. I've got thirteen episodes in this season. You got like You've got more. ten. Yeah, you got four more. So mm -hmm. so we haven't quite hit the bottom of this rabbit hole. Oh no. No, 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 no. Um, we have not hit the bottom of the rabbit hole. We let's haven't just, let's just hope they don't jump the shark and then be like, Yes, I was the one who arranged for your mother to be seduced by your father. Wait, you were like eight seven, eight eight years old. Spoiler that. that doesn't happen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't happen. We don't have the Batman eighty nine of finding out that the Joker killed the Waynes when he was Shaq Neep here. We're not doing that. We're not we're not doing that whole thing. But <clears throat> you know, because um Again, I've already watched this, but I haven't examined it. That's what that's what my part on this is. So, um, but yeah, it's just one of those. This one kept me compelled, drove me crazy, and it did so in a way that I was impressed with. And you know what that was? What? No fight scenes. There wasn't a fight so, scene so in this you're, episode. You're telling me that ashtray was the entire. Combat? That was all of the violent, all of the physical violence wow. in this episode. The rest of it was psychological. <laughs> that, that tells me that when the violent does, violence does come, he's going to be big. <laughs> yeah. Because they've got like a couple of shows of violence just bubbling up like some dark energy underneath New Orleans. Wait, I'm, I'm talking about the wrong show. Uh, <laughs> but uh, also... Uh, that I think ashtray to the head. Mm -hmm. I'm just picturing that suddenly becoming like a meme or a running gag. It's just like, oh yeah, well you know what I think? I think you're on pink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boop to the head. <laughs> yeah, I would, but nah. Unfortunately, Black Panther actually has one from the comic books um, that I put on my Facebook page, uh -huh. and it was Happy Black History Month. Well, white people, you know, the Irish were slap, you know, next meme. And every single meme was like, I'm going to downgrade slavery, and it's just slapped. So, <laughs> you know, and again, I could do that, you know. Well, the Irish had a pink <laughs> bleed, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I'm not going to be that guy. A um, couple of quick announcements. Um, yeah, again, we made some stuff. We made some good friends over at <coughs> the Long Beach Comic Expo mm -hmm. this weekend. Um, so much so as a matter of factuality, Dality. Um, looking for thing there. Oh, wait. I got to open up a new tab here. Got a few pictures. Um, mm -hmm. Just just a few. Just just a few pictures from, um, from the show. Um, which was fun. Um, 
again we we did we did some stuff you know here we are the cinematic sorcerer with killmonger and a young master chief because if you're taking a picture and a kid comes by you take the picture with the kid and of course oh wait wrong one <laughs> look at all that yeah but i had to give that credit anyway <clears throat> so yeah and um fortunately we had a moment with black superheroes uniting so that's me with frozone <laughs> Frozone looks great. Yeah, he does. He does. He's uh you know, he had a great LED um thing there. So <laughs> Where's my super suit? <laughs> my more favorite lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um of course there is uh, me summoning um a lady and um bombshell batgirl. You know, so that was those were some fun picks uh, <laughs> over there. And this weekend, mm -hmm. for those of you guys that are interested, and you better be interested, <laughs> um, the Long Beach Acting and Film Association is having a free event over at Echoes on Bellflower Boulevard in the, in the city of Long Beach on the border of Lakewood. And um, it is, to celebrate Black like History Month, the Future and Showbiz uh, networking event. And this month... It is black in film. <laughs> yeah, black in yeah, black in show business on February twenty fourth. And um it's gonna be at Echoes Pizza. Like I said, it's a free event. And um we are gonna be there networking and doing some filming and all that jazz. And um we've got some good actors, actresses, a couple of animators. Um we've got <coughs> um Sharif Walters, um you know, oh, Mahogany Nickel, um, longtime black um, comedian, sketch comedy person, um, animator, animator and film and film veteran Jason Sims, um, and this is all gonna be again at the Long Beach, um, the Long Beach Actor and Film Associations event, um, and this month because it's Black History Month, we're going to be focusing on black in entertainment, but next month it's going to be women in entertainment. Mm. So they have um, lots of good panels and lots of good, um, a lot of good people to talk to for like the young filmmakers out there that want to know how to leave Compton and what stuff they need to do to get their short films made, learn animation, how to market yourself, things like that. Where is, where is this happening again? This is happening at Echo's Pizza on Bellflower and Carson on Sunday afternoon. Oh, what time? Uh, that would be Sunday, af uh, su well, Sunday evening mm -hmm. from 6 o'clock to 10, 6 to 10 p.m. Yeah. Echo's Pizza, that's 2123 North Bellflower Boulevard in Long Beach. So that's um, parking in the rear. Yes, of park, the building. Yeah, parking behind the building. Yes, behind the building. Yeah. So, um, there's that. And if you guys want to know some other stuff that we're dealing with, and some of the other people that we met, um, we would love to tell you more about it. And feel free to ask those questions. But send those questions to back in the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k -E -E at gmail.com um, follow us over on the YouTube like I said um, we did like 15 or 16 interviews this week and each of them will be individually put up on YouTube for people to find out what we are who we do and all that stuff and we're going to be getting into a little more community service work as soon as I sit down with more counselors follow us on Twitter at back in the deck to find out how that goes with the opening up of the and clubs and comic clubs in various community centers around the Los Angeles area and possibly the Oakland area if I get a hold of the right people. Now, um, join us up on Deckers on the Book to find out what we're doing from day to day, week to week, you know, what miniatures we're painting. Um, I believe um, um, uh, Stickman has been like showing all the stuff he's going to be doing for the um, Batman tabletop miniatures game. Um, for the competitions that he's going to be going into. Follow us over on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash bid underscore p. And of course, follow us on the Instagram. So I got to say, thank you for showing up today, man. This oh, is... Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, you gave me a reason to stay awake. <laughs> um, and of course, what would today be like if I did not give props and thanks to all of our good friends over in the NP City? Thank you, Deck Mom. Hey, everybody. Yeah, has yeah, hashtag Deck Mob. And, um, yeah. Yeah, um, welcome on down, Jammer Time. We're happy to have you. And <laughs> that is, um, that is right with Beto. White girl got evicted out of, out of the black girl's head. Because the black girl ain't got time to think about her. And, and.
And um, feel free to contact us again when you guys start um, when you guys start sending us emails during the show. We will have the segment where we read and answer your emails, so it's almost like you're here. But with that, I'm gonna say. Um, Hit us up at any of these places, and if anybody tells you that you can't have the hobbies you like because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual preference, disability, or your budget, you tell them to take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Grade Cinematic Sorcerer, along with... License to Hitch. And thank you guys for joining us on Buster Recap. We will see you next time. Night, everybody. <laughs>